Hello. This time we're going to let Zend Framework assist us in authenticating our users. For that, we're going to use a set of classes coming from Zend Auth. Uh, a few notes on that uh, is that Zend Auth there. Okay, now, um, at this point, you would want to pass the username and the password that the user has entered. Uh, well, for that, you will probably use some kind of form, uh, but I think we are a little too early in that stage to create any forms. Uh, I just want to test and make sure that this Zend auth mechanism actually works. So for now, I'm going to hard code the username and password. And I'm going to use the ones they have in the database already. Uh, later, this will be replaced with um, variables coming in from the actual form. Okay. So there is our information hard coded, and now we need to pass it on to the, the adapter. So this information needs to be checked against the database. Uh, therefore, it has to be passed through the adapter. We do that through set identity. And set credential. So as a quick recap, here we told it what columns to look for the username and passwords and here we're actually passing the username and password to be checked against these column values. Now that we got the uh, adapter going with the information being passed in and out, now we are going to do the actual authentication. The authentication itself needs to be done through the Zend auth instance instead. So we're going to have to get its instance. Like that. And we are going to get, sorry, not get, but actually authenticate the request through auth adapter. And we're going to store it store the result inside of the result variable just to keep things simple. So there, we set up the we set up the end of adapter that passes the information in and out. Uh, we passed the actual uh, input of the user into the adapter. Then we got the instance of Zend auth. Uh, we authenticated through that instance with respect to the adapter that we created. Now we need to check whether the authentication attempt was successful or not. For that, ZendOS provides a method called isValid, which returns a boolean statement. Uh, we're going to check against it now. So isValid is a method um, in the object returned by the authenticate method of ZendOS. If it's valid, uh, we're going to, for now, output a simple string. Otherwise, if the authentication failed, we're going to say invalid. Uh, so let's see if that works. Okay, it's a valid login attempt. Let's see what happens if we change the password to the wrong one. Authentication attempt is invalid now. Okay, so it works. However, the problem with this is that it only works for the authentication, controller, and login method. We need to somehow have the user credentials accessible through the whole application. Not only that, we need the full set of user details available, not just username and password. We want the entire row from this table about the user to be stored somewhere so it can be used. 
for example in our um, later access control list we are going to need the user's role for that we are going to store that table row that corresponds to the user we're going to use a um, zend auths adapter method called get result row object we're going to store it all inside of the identity variable So there, we're using uh, the adapter to get the user's details from the database. Now we need to store it application-wide. For that, we need some kind of persistent storage. And by default, we use Zend Session, which is a wrapper for the PHP session that you all should know. Um, we're going to get the default session, uh, sorry, storage from the Zend Auths instance. And we're going to put it inside of auth storage variable. So here we got the storage, and now we're going to put the identity into that storage using the write method. And we are putting down the identity. So here, once again, we grab the user's details from the table using Zen uh, auth adapter and then we use the Zen auth instance to write that identity into a persistent storage so it can be accessed in other parts of the application. Once the authentication is completed we don't want the user to hang around here anymore so we are going to redirect to the index controller and index action. So let's see if that actually works. So if I change the password to the wrong one, we are going to stay on the page with the invalid there. But if we uh, successfully authenticate, we should be redirected to an index and we indeed we are. Now that we got Zend auth to work, uh, we now should give the user an opportunity to enter the username and password himself instead of having it hard coded here. Uh, so we're going to need some kind of form. Uh, for that, uh, we're going to create a Zend form, and we're going to put it in the forms folder, which is instead of the application. And we're going to create a PHP class that will extend Zend form. Uh, the file I'm going to be calling login form.php. So, if you remember from the convention, a class name must have form underscore login form. So the form is how the Zend auto loader will know that it must look inside of the forms folder, and login form means it must look inside of login form.php and it's going to extend Zend form. This is a very extensive class with lots and lots of features, um, but this is going to be a very simple form, so we're not going to create anything fancy. Uh, for uh, all we need at the moment is uh, a simple construct function. Um, Zend form uh, is able to accept a number of options. We're not going to use any of them now, uh, but just in case we ever need to, uh, we're going to create a facility to do it. And because um, this class inherits all the methods from Zend form, we are going to set the options to the parent. So if we ever want to have any custom options passed onto the Zend form, uh, we have the ability to do so. We're not going to use that uh, right now though. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned before, form login form inherits the